Hello boys and girls, Miss Foster here. Today's lesson is Chapter 3, Lesson 6. This lesson is about practicing subtraction facts. Let's take a look at our learning goals. As you can see, our unit learning goal is still the same. I can use strategies to fluently add and subtract. Let's take a look at our lesson learning goal. Our lesson learning goal is, I can use different strategies to solve basic addition and subtraction facts. Now let's take a look at our learning scale. Where does today's learning goal fit in? Take a minute and think about this. Can you find on the learning scale where our learning goal fits in? If you said three, you would be correct. I can fluently add and subtract within 20 using mental strategies. So let's engage. Look at the fact five plus three equals eight. Do you know the related subtraction fact? Think about this for just a moment. If you answered 8 minus 3 equals 5, or 8 minus 5 equals 3, you'd be correct. I want you to notice that we're using the same whole and the same parts for each of these facts. And think about this for just one moment. How does the subtraction facts that you wrote undo the addition fact. When I add, I start with 5, add 3 to get the sum of 8. When I subtract, I start with 8 and take away 3 to get 5. Or, I take away 5 to get 3. Now it's time for listen and draw. You may want to have a sheet of paper and a pencil in front of you, so if you don't have one, go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Let's take a look at Gina's model. Gina put four color tiles inside the circle and three color tiles outside of the circle. What addition fact could be written for Gina's model? Go ahead and think about that and write it down on your own paper. If you wrote down 3 plus 4 equals 7 or 4 plus 3 equals 7, you'd be correct. These addition facts show the two parts, 3 and 4, added together to make the whole, which is 7. The number of si tiles inside of the circle and the number of the tiles outside of the circle are the parts, and the total number of tiles is the whole. Now look at Gina's model again. Suppose there were 7 tiles outside of the circle, and Gina moved 4 of the tiles inside of the circle. What subtraction fact could be written for Gina's model? Go ahead and pause the video and record your answer. If you answered 7 minus 4 equals 3, you'd be correct. Because Gina had 7 outside of the circle and she took away 4 by moving them inside of the circle. That would give us three tiles left outside of the circle. Now, suppose there are seven tiles that were originally inside of the circle, and Gina removed three. How many tiles are inside of the circle still? Can you write a subtraction fact that could be written for Gina's model? Go ahead and pause the video and record your answer. Remember, 
there were seven inside of the circle, and Gina removed three. Welcome back. If you wrote seven minus three equals four, you'd be correct. All right, think back to what we just did with Gina's model. We decided that we had four different facts that we found. We had three plus four equals seven, or we had four plus three equals seven. And then for subtraction facts, we had seven minus three equals four, or seven minus four equals three. How are these different facts related? They are related because all of the facts have the same whole, which is seven, and the same parts, three and four. Now we're gonna model and draw and look at ways to find differences. So get your paper and your pencil ready. One way that you can find a difference, which or subtract, is to count back by one, two, or three. Look at the subtraction fact seven minus three. For this, we're gonna start with seven and say six, five, four, and four is the answer. Look at the problem, nine minus three. For this one, we can start with nine and say eight, seven, six to get the answer of six. Notice that we are counting back three times because we are subtracting by three. If these numbers were a two, we would count back two numbers and it would be six, five to get the answer of five or eight, seven to get the answer of seven. Another strategy that you can use is thinking about a missing add-in to subtract. So in my head, I would think five plus what equals eight. And we know that five plus three equals eight. So three is the difference between eight and five. Another way to think about this problem is to count up from five up to eight to get to three. So five, six, seven, eight, three. Now it's time to show what you know. Look at number one. Write the difference for six minus four. If you answered two, you were correct. There's a couple strategies you can use to think about this. You can count up from four to get to six. So we know four, five, six gives us two. Or you can think about what, what number plus four equals six. And we know that four plus two equals six. Go ahead and try, pause the video and try number two. If you answer three, you're correct. What strategies could you use? There's a couple ways. One is you can count up from seven to get to ten. So seven, eight, nine, ten. And that gives us three. Or you can think what number added to seven can get ten. So seven plus three equals ten. Notice that we did not count backwards because we are not subtracting by one, two, or three. 
It's easy to count backwards by 1, 2, and 3, and it's also quick. But when we have bigger numbers such as 4 and 7, it's not so quick, and these strategies are a little bit faster. Now it's time for Ticket to Group. Exit this video, click on the next tab in the module, complete the quiz questions, and we'll continue working in class. See you next time.